I feel this could be a bit of a rocky performance for VP, but let's get into the action. Here. Well, here we go then. Mouse Sports are going to be boosting up the shore. Pretty standard procedure so far, just trying to find any sort of information they can. Not necessarily a kill, they just want to see whether they can spot terrorists towards the top of middle and potentially lower B as well. You can see a player as Chris J being boosted on those short boxes as well. Virtus Pro have got that long control as well, so actually committing all five players towards this point of the map. Speedy will spot them just behind the barrels there, just trying to see if he can dink some of the heads off there, but very passive setup so far. VP now with full control along. It's been interesting to see how they execute. Yeah, Speedy though has definitely heard and seen a few of those players. Nico opens things off. Beautiful headshot from him. Nico's trying to do what he can, but he gets picked off as well. It's now down to Speedy. He's doing quite a bit of damage. Taz is going to be the last to fall down with Bialy in a great hole for Mouse Sports. Speedy doing the damage. Interesting approach there from Virtus Pro. It has to be said. The fact that they, they get full control along. At that point, you, probably, you normally go into an ace split that stage. You, you, you want to, like, pincer the CT so they're stuck on the bomb site. Like, when, you look, when all five players are committed towards long like that, it's quite easy for the USPs to pick you off. We saw Nico pick up that first headshot. And VP didn't really execute into the round at all. They just ran up long and kind of hoped they could uh, steamroll the bomb site, but it didn't really turn out like that. Mouse Sports pick up the first round, but VP will be forcing into this one. And once again, they will be going for that long control. The bomb is showing attention towards that part of the map as well. We do have two players going towards short as well, so potentially more of an A split coming up this time. You can see Pasha there has made his way into the pit, but he actually gets tagged as well by Chris J. Chris J, one of the most deadly scout users in the world, I would say. Yeah, this is one of the reasons why I say going back, uh, Mouse Sports used to wreck on this map because Chris J was just as happy to use that scout as indeed it was with the orb. Mm. So I expect to see Franks coming down here from him. As you say, though, Pasha down to 19, so he has to be super careful. Still in pit right now, trying to land a headshot if he can. And meanwhile, the rest of his team are trying to felt their way through long and short. The problem is right now, you can see VP don't actually have any utility whatsoever. They need Pasha to actually land one of these shots. They can just basically surprise with their PT-50 running at the bomb site. That's what they're trying now, but look how comfortable the CTs are. There's, there's no way they're going to lose this round. You haven't got any smokes to go over crossover. The bomb's been dropped. This force buy has been pretty lackluster. I prefer on the force buy, like you at least take one smoke, you go out towards middle, and you try and overwhelm the, the one or two CD players that may be there. You have a real chance of getting those kills. When you're going towards long with literally no flashbangs, no smokes, hoping the scout does something, I think your chances are very slim to none at that point. So now we just have Taz remaining. He's on a five and one. And once you have two HP and the PT-50, I don't think he is long for this world. And that's it. Dennis does decide his fate and picks up the second round from Mouseports there. So, so far, so good. Your prediction is looking uh, pretty accurate so far. Looks like there's a decent start coming in from Mouseports. If they can continue this momentum on the CT side and just uh, break down the economy of the T's, maybe they have a real shower here. Yeah, the stars very well may align here for Mouse Sports. And I completely agree with you. The lack of utility was uh, an absolute Achilles heel. But what I would also say is you've got to give credit to Chris J. Reading that situation, pulls yeah. back into the advantageous position, uses the long range of the scout. So here we go. VP with absolutely nothing other than just the one flashbang in this round. Not even upgraded pistols. Well, this is the thing. So you can see Mouse Sports have read the situation pretty nicely, keeping the SMGs and the scout just trying to farm as much cash as they can in this round. No, they'll be up against a full eco here, not even an upgraded pistol. Full Glock's coming in as VP are starting to show some presence towards middle here. Nothing. I'm not really sure what the plan is. I assume they're going to flash out towards mid and hope they can make something of this, but the problem is Nico is waiting towards him in CT spawn. Man, Cajun B loving this map so much, he actually joined and left. Well, I think was by accident, mm. but here we go. <laughs> the action is about to come in. Chris J has called this one. If he just holds fire, he will be in the frags, you have to feel. The, the scout is going to do damage, misses that first shot, does connect in the second time of Askin's going to line them up, Lock, knocks another one down, looking for the third, not getting on the first time. But the rest of his team now is manoeuvring themselves into position, the bomb has been planted though, so all things considered, VP probably completed what they set out for, and they get two frags as well, with just one flashbang. Yeah, that pretty much was the best outcome for that round, obviously they had nothing to work with whatsoever. Just getting a bomb planted, you see it going down towards short, that gives each player an extra round, an extra $800, and it kind of lessens the blow on that force buy from the second round, which amounted to pretty much nothing. Chris J with uh, a nice display of scout headshots there. And uh, this is the big one. This is the first gun round. You can see no AWPs have been purchased for Virtus Pro. Chris J, we kind of mentioned before him being a deadly scout user. He's more than happy to take these into the gun rounds. Yep. I prefer Mouse Sports to go aggressive into this round. Like, show something towards maybe boosting up short once again, maybe pushing into B tunnels just to kind of uh, try and find that first frag and give them a little bit of a benefit just because they have that scout going into this one. Absolutely. And you can see the VP are definitely respecting. And as you said, here comes the aggressive push. Very nearly catch. I think that was Neil who was just trying to throw a flashbang, but uh, he has just been tagged down a tiny bit, will be backing away. So CT's taking pretty aggressive positions in long as well, just be pushing on down there towards the doors, getting information as they push. 
Well, that's the whole idea from the CTs. Gain map control, push the Ts back, get them second guessing as to what that setup is in the B tunnels. The interesting thing is, though, Massports have actually decided to leave them fully open. So after that initial push, they probably were trying to find that first frag, but getting information like that has delayed the Ts and made them question themselves a little bit as we still continue. No frags to be gathered so far. It's just Dennis who's taking the brunt of the damage. He's down to 27 HP. Now VP now going to be setting up. Chris J is towards middle with the scout. The smoke's not going to take away too much vision from him, especially when he can jump as well. So VP is buying the time right now. I suppose good news for VP is they still have plenty of utility to play with as Chris J does catch a glimpse but will not convert that into a frag at this time of asking. However, the call will come in that at least two players have pushed on to short. That does keep Nico interested at the back of the site. Now he's not going to be moving anywhere. But VP are taking every second at their disposal here, and they haven't really got through on anywhere. They haven't really got any real estate so far, Henry. Well, they've got the bomb towards B tunnel, so I assume this is a B split coming in. Next is in a great position, though. That shot, he exchanges it in the end. Comes down to a 4-on-4. Four four. Dennis is going big as well. It's equal 3-on-3 three three as they enter the B bomb site. The site's actually be completely open from the CTs now. Chris J was pushing straight through. He's only got the scout on the 5-7 to work with. Probably want to be upgrading to an AK-47, and this kill's going to mean everything if Pasha can find Chris J for the smoke here. Bomb has been planted. And Pash is just biding his time, waiting like a call fight for two frags for him. And a third as well. Beautiful spray control from the VP veteran. And yeah. now Sports will concede their first round. Very nice stuff. They're just great positional awareness there from Pasha. He knew once the CTs had lost that uh, control towards the B-bomb site, they had no real choice but to quickly push through the smoke and see what they could do. They didn't have a chance to check Pasha. And like he said, waiting there like a coiled Viper to take down three players. And that's the first round in favor of VP. The thing is, though, Mouse Sports farmed so much cash in those yep. initial anti ecos absolutely fine here. And Chris J does get the AWP this round as well. They're going to be going aggressive once more. They pushed B tunnels last time. Now Nico going straight towards the top of middle. He's alone as well. This could be huge. Does get spotted, and now he's in a real predicament. He is. He almost has to stand and fight, because if he backs on off there, he can get picked off from numerous angles. He gets picked off anyway. And Snacks is larger than in charge. And that really does put uh, Mouse Sports in a, a terrible position, especially as Pasha has secured the second frag for them. Frag still coming down, though, in mid as Taz will get the better of Mouse Sports once more. Dennis is in a good position to strike. He's going to get at least one, bring this back into a two versus three. Mm. However, that bomb is starting to transition up mid, and there's still options and plenty of time to play with. Yeah, Dennis trying to react there. Obviously, after you lose those first initial frags, you need to do something. You need to react and take some sort of real estate. He gets a pick. It doesn't equal things up. It definitely gives him a real chance of winning this round. We still have Chris J towards the A bomb site, Towards Akaro, he's waiting for terrorists to cross here. The problem for him is they still have flashbangs and a arsenal of utility to work with, and he's getting pincered from long as well. That's a big frag in this 2-1-3. That pretty much seals it up nicely for VP. It was a 1-1 stack. And that player on A has been picked off. Bomb will be planted. And VP may very well just go and try and hunt down Dennis. Yeah, at this stage, he hasn't got a kit. And it's a three-on-one. The bomb has been planted. The best he can do is maybe try and salvage an AWP. But that's pretty much all he can do at this stage. Staying alive is going to be paramount for him. So Mount Sports, once again, they go for that aggression. The first gun round, they push into upper B. This time, they said Nico towards the top of mid. I'd prefer to have he had some help from the, the teammates. Maybe a flash towards the top of middle before he faced. He seemed to just go up blind and... Honestly, he needed to find that first frag. If you lose, as soon as you get spotted and uh, you don't get anything from it, you're, you're definitely on the, the retreat there, and you don't know whether this player's coming from lower B. It's just you're instantly dead. You might as well commit and try and see if you can take one down with you. Um, it didn't happen for him, and that was the begin of the rots for Mouse Sports there. As uh, VP just had to play very cool then. He's waited for the reaction to come in, got the frags in exchange, and that's two rounds in a row. And it does save the M4A1, so I have the question now. I'm sure they can get some upgraded pistols here. I'm not sure whether... Money will lie exactly. Let's have a look as we go into this one there. So they can just get to use the M4 the best they can. They're not going to smoke towards middle as well. So the AWP should be able to spot as to how many players have crossed here. Chris Jay's actually managed to get towards the top of middle here. Could do something with this. He's only got a silence USP, but he has got the surprise factor working in his favor. The yeah, question is, do VP expect another push-up mid? Bialy gets caught and actually will be fragged from the Soul M4. And Dennis still has that full HP. And he's going in for seconds. Neo is there. And will just about take him down. Still, though, it's a two on three. And this is doable for Mouse Sports. They still have that M4 in play. As I say that, Dennis wow. picks himself up another one. And keeping this round very interesting indeed. The bomb is going to be and will be planted. And the fact that Speedy only has a... I was about to say only USP, but he just picked up an AK as I started that sentence. So, two weapons in play here. Mouse Sports may very well want to go for this one. I think so. I think mean, this is... Uh a justified retake. They can find the first kill very quickly. You can see 
Neo is on very low HP as well, but no kits. I think they're making the more safer play here, making sure they have decent money to go to the next round. If they can drop these guns next, especially Dennis picking up three kills, he probably has some decent cash going to the next round. Yeah, he's got 3k in the bank there, so they're going to be doing okay. It's uh, actually a very reasonable round, considering they had one M4 and got what, four USPs. That's actually not bad at all, getting three kills and saving two weapons as well. That's actually probably the best outcome they could have hoped for there. Dennis definitely stepping up there. It's going to bring the scoreline 2-3-3. Three, three. Snacks to survive with the AWP, so you can see Dennis could drop the AWP if Chris J did fancy it. I'd like them to go to a more of a classic setup now. We've been seeing a lot of aggression coming in from Mouse Sports. They haven't really tested the water with their defensive setups just yet. Obviously, I think it was justified in the first gun round, but that second one was a little bit too high risk in my liking. Chris J will get the AWP once more. It's going to be Dennis who drops that over, but VP getting that decent long spawn. Very viable on Dust2, just to go out and face and see what we can do with it. Actually, that Molotov's going to... Leave Bayelli in a very difficult situation as he's not able to get back up from his teammates right now. And there it is. Speedy does take him down and bring it to the five and four. Yeah, Molly was huge, completely isolating Bayelli from the rest of the pack there. And now, as you said, they are good spawns to push long. Well, as soon as that Molly lands, it's pretty much lights out. Absolutely. And you can see them just smoking it off now, capitalizing it. VPR reacting pretty nicely, trying to push up short as quickly as they can. But next and Chris J doing absolute work here. They find a frag apiece. And this is going to be snacks in the air now. They have got the AWP to work with, but really many options at this point because Nico is coming in for the backstab as well. This is a much needed round for Mouse Sports just to calm and steady the ship a little bit after the last couple of rounds here but as you say Snacks with the AWP and Neo with the AK could definitely pull something off they are on the site already with that bomb need to be careful they don't want to get too antsy and go for that fast plant in case someone's hiding in the shadows Next is in CT spawn right now is waiting for backup to arrive and the bomb has now been planted so VP all the pressure now shifts in the sense they don't have to worry about getting that bomb down. It's all in the CT to try and retake this. They do have three smokes and a HE to play with. And Neo is in prime position to strike. That's the first spray control. Is he going to go in for the second one? He actually did spin towards the stairs. I thought for a second he could have had that one. He got players jumping up. Neo's going to pick up a second frag. Surely this isn't possible. He runs out of bullets. He will be dropping down to his death. And here comes oh. Snacks and Speedy delivers the fatal blow and lays him to rest. That will be a defuse. But VP in a four versus two. Way too close for comfort as far as that was a this is two when it started. It was uh, that was kind of crazy how Mouse Sports, I was going to say before they started that retake, the key thing for them is just keeping the numbers modest. They wanted to make sure they only dropped maybe one, two people there, but it got a lot more interesting than that. When Snacks was alone on that one on three with the AWP on car, he really had a shot there yeah. of taking that one down. Mouse Sports do recover though, and they're going for the double orb setup now. In my opinion, the strongest setup you can really bring to the party here allows you to have two turrets on either side of the map and a little rifle unit working together trying to do retakes and stuff but snacks did manage to get an awp as well as we enter round number eight here you can see everything a much more passive approach here vp waiting to see if that aggression is going to be coming in from the cts once more but with these double orb setups you probably want to have a much more defensive game going forward the really interesting thing as well you know on the desk they're talking about the fact that you know pasha was dropping off the up a little bit more for neo here we go with snacks he could have dropped that it, to one of those it's, but it's interesting like an inferno yeah. like normally for vp snacks is more than happy to pick up the awp yeah. Dust 2 is not a map we actually see VP played that often. That was normally their go-to ban. A lot of people have been saying this is like one of the ones they've been actually working on behind the scenes. We haven't seen them in an event in quite a while, so maybe they feel a lot stronger on this one. But so far, Man Sports definitely making a fight of it. The scoreline is 4-3 in their favour. We kind of, well, I think the analysts predicted this is almost a, a runover for VP. It should have been at least on paper, but uh, it seems like Man Sports definitely have got a few tricks up their sleeve. I think Man Sports are an underrated team when it comes to Dust 2. But are they going to be able to, to finish this one off? Of course, it's still early days. VP can easily Absolutely. bounce back from this situation. If they just win a couple rounds, of course, the CT curse sets in, but Chris J is on point with one of the aforementioned turrets. Yes, well, a pretty simple frag for him there. It's going to be bringing down to the five on four. You can see the T's retreating from that area. They don't want to go face Chris J in the back of the of an orb. So they're going to make their way towards the A bomb site. You can see they haven't got any flashbangs, or at least they've got one on Taz. That's about it as they make their way up towards the short and emphatically, and the frags start to come in there. Huge kills but from next, but Neo is back. The Molotov's going to stop the plant. Other than on short, which is going to be planted right now. Again, it's a three-on-two retake. In favor to the CTs. Nice shot from Nico. Puts all of the pressure on Taz's shoulders. And they are going to line up for him on the elevator, but he's not going to get it done. And now Sports will pick up yet another. Very slow pace round there from VP. Just trying to work the picks there. You saw Snacks go towards upper B. They were just hoping he would find something out of that. But Chris J, like I said before, very simple frag for him. Brought it down to the 5-on-4. And it just seems like VP just going to, well, 
We've got the man disadvantage now. Should we just run up short together? They didn't have enough utility to play with to execute properly. They're maybe smoking off CT spawn, dropping someone down and trying to counter one of the orbs. So they just kind of ran up one by one and got punished for it as well. So after that round, they will be forced by into this one. You can see they've got Tech 9s, CZs, PT-50s, and a few a little bit of utility as well. They're going to be going for that long spawn once again. Neo is out. He's going to force the CT player back, but Chris J taking down Pasha once again brings it down to the 5 of 4 in favor of the German side. Yep, solid shots right off the get-go from Chris J. Needs to be a bit careful. If he pushes up too far on long, he does definitely find himself in a bit of a danger zone. Molotov onto the site. It's going to try and draw some of those CTs. Snacks going to line up the nade as well. And Smoke has connected onto the CT side, and Tass somehow gets the frag, but here come the orbs, both ringing in onto short. The damage is still being inflicted, though, from VP, as Neo has picked up the orb now. And if he can land this shot, this is definitely yeah. on for him. Definitely There's still time. On. He's not pressured to push to the site just yet. He's still peering into the CT spawn. He feels that some things up. Great double peek for Mouse Sports, making sure that if he does land the op shot, the Avenge frag comes in six to three now. Exactly. That's all he wanted to do. They didn't want to actually allow him to get into the position where he could plant the bomb and they have to retake and potentially be in a different one and x situations. They decided to face at exactly the same time. And as you mentioned, he only, only have one shot to go with the AWP. As soon as he kills one or misses one, they can kill him together. Worked perfectly for them. And that's another round on the board for Mouse Sports. And yep. We're going to round number 10, it's actually a difficult buy here. Snacks, who was the AWP player before, he's just going to have the Tech 9. They have got smokes, but no Molotovs to work with, so you can see them playing very passively once more. Not going to be forcing the issue just yet, waiting for any more aggression coming in from the TTs, but with that double orb setup, I don't think we'll be seeing any more of that while this buy is still in force. I feel like this is really Mouse Sports' round to win. It would be uh, more on their mistakes, I feel, than VP. Stepping up to the plate here if they were to lose this. Nico is going to go for that peak though on long. Is he going to get anything for his troubles? Yes, he will. Pasha just shoulders around the corner at the worst possible moment. And the fact that there is no cavalry charging in allows Nico now to pull himself back. Looking up onto the catwalk once more. We've seen him in this position a bunch of times. It's just very difficult to deal with when you have a lack of utility though from a T's perspective. And once again it's the 5 and 4 disadvantage in favour of Mouse Sports. It's so good at working that first pick. This time it's Nico picking it up and Matt VP looking like they're actually going to try and execute a little bit more into the A bomb side. I know the orbs are there. Dropping down the CT spawn is what we want to see. Try and stifle the orbit here. It's all down to Taz. What can he do? Nico actually takes him down and this should be the round tied up here as VP still trying to force their way onto the bomb side. Oh, but here comes Neo. He's large, and he's going to take himself down two kills. Can he get a third? No. But has he inflicted enough damage on the Mouse Sports squad to clutch this round? There's the frag from Snacks catching. Mouse Sports off guard. But there's Chris J as well. Bialy all by his lonesome. Has the AK with the armor. The bomb planted for short right now. He's waiting for these players to push his location, and Speedy takes him down, dispatching him with ease. Mouse Sports move to a seventh round. So they lose that first man once again, and we see the, the pick coming in from Nico once more. They actually got a position where VP were actually, once again, very close to winning it. Those clutch situations, those two-on-ones, very good players to win those clutches. You've got players like Taz and Neo who are known for their clutch situations. This was actually a great play from Neo to get them into it. So it all came down to that, whether they could actually make something of that round. But unfortunately for them, it's actually going to force them into another difficult buy here. This time it's Taz on the Tech 9, four AK-47s and a distinct lack of grenades as well. Chris J showing a little bit more aggression this time. He's going to be facing towards lower B. And it looks like that's where exactly where the teams will be going as Dennis and Nex open up the floodgates of the frags. They do indeed. Here comes the pop, but no one's going to be pushing from the team. It's important to mention at the start of this round as well, Henry, that the economy has been dwindling for Mouse Sports. Four of their players were very low. I think even sub $1,000. So Because these rounds have all come down to exactly. one, one on twos. I've yep. They haven't had any real solid rounds, but they have won four in a row. And this is a big one for them. This should stabilize the economy quite nicely. They haven't lost a single man so far. I think the headline here is don't lose any frags, but Bialy does punish Chris J and loses the AWP. As we go into the four on two now, they have got the bomb on Pasha, but not exactly in great positions here. As you can see, smoked off at our upper B. And I wish I could see the round time, but I can't. So I'm going to kind of yeah. uh, <laughs> see where this one goes. We're going to try and guess what, what time it's on. I'd say it's probably about 50 seconds. Well, I have no idea. There's probably people it's in Twitch chat. Uh, if you guessed that <laughs> right, I like, tell us the lottery numbers. You're clearly yeah. clairvoyant. But Pasha is the last player remaining. As you say, though, maybe, well, I was going to say, maybe if he bags himself another couple of kills, his job's been done. That's not the case. So having with four players, very healthy for Mouse Sports.
Well, that's going to pay VP now a maximum loss bonus, meaning $3,400 going into the accounts of each player each time. Still, I don't think they'll have enough. This is it. This is the quasi buy coming in. So, like I said, they get the, the maximum loss bonus. You keep them, keep their balance about 2.2k, and that means they actually get a nice full buy going into the next round with the addition of that 3,400. So, once again, they'll have the AWPs. But so far, their executions haven't been fantastic. It seems that they've got themselves in an economical rut. And when they're trying to get into situations, they're actually in five or fours every single time they come to the bomb side. So, it hasn't been easy for VP so far. As we enter round number 12 now, Miko has been flashed off and manages to get away. As I say that though, he actually does get punished. And now brings it to the 5-4 in their favor. Comes down to next on that bomb side, but this force by working out very nicely for VP indeed. And now Snacks will be pushing through the smoke. He assumes that the CT player did already go through. That's not the case. It's going to be Chris J. Lands the USP headshot. 2-1-3 retake. Uh, flashbang, a smoke and a decoy. Not the greatest amount of utility to retake a site with. And the fact that their funds aren't the healthiest Makes this a bit of a rough retake, but here we go. Chris J going in first, and he's going to be the first to fall in this confrontation. Speedy, the newest addition to Mao Sports, has it all to do. And he decides, screw this, I'm going to save the AWP. What's What's no around that turned out to be? So they have the Tech Nines and uh, some smoke grenades. They did have some armor as well. Just went for the simple beast flip there. And that's where, as soon as you find that first frag, you catch a CT with their pants down. And you can actually just swarm the bomb side there. And you can just find one player towards that site. Once you get the bomb down on Dust 2 and B, it's a very difficult retake indeed. One of the more difficult sites to retake, especially when you have that double orb set up, for yep. example. That just makes things a lot harder. So I just probably find a round out of nowhere. And as we mentioned before, their economy was sitting pretty healthy anyway, and they've got that double orb set up now themselves. So Neo and Pasha, Snacks is dropped to this time. Maybe shows a little bit of inconsistency on their T setups, but let's see what they can do with this. Actually, the Mouse Sports who have been knocked off now. They've gone for the force, but well, the quasi bio. So they've got the scouts, the five seven, some body armor. Just trying to see whether they can work that first. Game. Speedy doing a tremendous amount of damage down to Pasha. Takes it down to seven HP through the door with the Desert Eagle there. Maybe something else to take into account as well. When Snacks had the orb, maybe that was based off his spawn. He may have had a, a really sick spawn for long. I, I'm not entirely sure. I'd be very interested to go back and watch that. But as you say, Pasha, super low. Dennis, however, has taken damage himself. He's down to 21. And this round is going to start to shape up through Catwalk, as far as VP are concerned. As they've been walking into Chris J, who goes for the reload at the worst possible moment. Here comes Nico. We know how capable he is with a Deagle. First frag goes down, but he's not going to add to that, that count. Chris J in the meantime, though, picks up oh. this. Scout's going to pick himself up that second frag. Goodness me, surely Virtus Pro aren't going to lose this round. But it's looking ever so slightly <laughs> as Nick's going to pick himself up a frag as well. What is going on? Pasha is still alive, but he's so low on HP. Any bullet ends his life. Well, not really much he can do here. I've got the AWP. As long as the CTs don't make a tremendous mistake here, this round is tied up. As you mentioned, he's got 7 HP to work with. What can he actually do here? I'd be uh, just tempted to save at this point. You have to go recover the bomb, kill three CTs, and there it is. Chris J will settle the score. And after winning the force by themselves, they actually come back and lose the force by from... It wasn't even a force by, it was more of like a, a semi quasi. They had five sevens and a scout. Chris J, once again, testament to how good he is at that weapon. Another double headshot round for him. Man, Pasha looks pissed. Yeah? <laughs> you see that shake of the head there? He's like, guys, well, look what at the, the hell? Look, look, look at the, what a crucial round that was yeah. as well. They reset once again, and now they've got Snacks and Viali on the upgraded pistols. They've got no nades once again, and just using those spawns and hoping they can find something with this. Speedy, on the other hand, making sure he doesn't drop his frag here. He knows how big this round can be. Four mouse sports there, and Chris J does rattle off a shot towards long, but he doesn't get a kill, but at least finds out that where the positional control from the T's may lie. Well, this, this could get a bit sticky for Chris J. And he's going to get traded out. It's a pretty decent trade considering the weaponry right now. It's Gleeve and Orp as well. Meanwhile, Pasha pushes through long. Pags himself the frag. He gets himself taken down in the return. Now it's all up to Taz. He's banging himself. What can he get anymore? Finally, he bags himself that kill. And now Dennis on short. It's going to do what he can, but the bomb's been planted. And he is just going to run off here and save the M4 for the final round of this half. Yeah, so VP keeping it simple and loose once again, just getting that long spawn and forcing the issue towards that area. They find the first pick and they split the bomb site. Telling your shots, and then those simple executions are always, all it's about. Dennis does pick up Taz for his troubles, but looks like he will be saving it. Just looking at the scoreboard there, it looked like Snacks is currently on three frags, and maybe that was a, a reason for him to be chucked off the AWP. Who knows, as uh, Bialy now is the one wielding it. They did have a double up setup before, but uh, there we go. It's been a Pretty interesting game so far. A lot of uh, unfavorable situations going in favor of VP as we enter the last round now. We do indeed. So, the A4. What's it going to get done for the CTs? As you've seen there, Taz 
two key frags that were picked up. And we have got the round time. We can see the round time now. Awesome. So at least we can <laughs> build a little bit more tension there. Then Dennis does get hit through the doors by Snacks. He's back on the orb now. Once again, Bialy, this is going to be going out towards Long behind the blue bin there. He's in a difficult position though. As Speedy does take him down. It's a little bit questionable there. And Chris J showing that aggression towards Shaw. They pick up the first two frags. And now the CTs, all they need to do is fall back and just actually play the bomb side. Make BP force into a side try and plant. Let's see how this one goes down. Pasha has an AWP as well. Just trying to work a pick in any way they can. CTs though. Two rifles. Desert Eagles. Just holding back and seeing what they can make of this. I really don't like this face towards Long. This is how you uh, throw the round away a little bit. Almost a... Rinse and repeat of the buy that ended up breaking Virtus Pro's back the last time when we saw Pasha's reaction. So they're playing into the advantages once more. Nico somehow gets the better of Pasha. He was getting baited in by his teammate though. As you can see Speedy was just trying to show presence on that corner while Nico was getting very close to those doors. Gonna leave Snacks now. In the one versus five in the last round. Obviously no reason to save and Mouse Sports with a very successful CT campaign there. 10 plays 5. VP looked like they were coming back into him. Managed to get three rounds in a row after the initial pistol deficit. But uh seemed like Mouse Sports, once they got that double orb setup rolling, that was it for VP. They didn't really have an answer to it. Reliant on the spawn fa factor quite a lot, trying to get long control. Worked out a couple of times. And if you remember that the other gun round, I say, they won, was actually the pistol straight through middle and they swarmed the bomb side there. So you're actually, right, the yeah. gun round. Snacks right? three frags. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. So this pistol round, I'd say, means everything for VP. They haven't really impressed me too much yet. Most teams will boost up towards short, sending two players up to that area. Just trying to push into lower B, maybe throw some nades there. Spot towards middle and see whether you can gain some intel. Just to work out where the numbers lay like for the T's at least. Let's see how they do approach it. Speedy has got the utility play for Mouse Sports this round. Nico's oh. got the Desert Eagle on the pistol. That's kind of unorthodox. It shows how confident he's feeling right now. Just wants to roll in and uh, tag up some CTs. And Pasha's actually going to be pushing in towards top middle by himself here. Will he get flashed in? He does and he gets punished for it as well. Goes down to 11 HP. The call's going to come in. You can see the probably players reacting and there it is. Chris J will finish him off. What a huge opening. 20 or so seconds of this yeah. round for Mouse Sports. Getting the dink on Snacks, then the frag. Snacks on 3 HP. Pash has gone down. Yeah. I'm not sure what the action is. What's the answer to this sort of thing? They haven't done anything towards the T's. They still have their utility. They're still ready to full execute at this point. Next, just holding up for any push through towards middle. The CTs need to find something, and you can see Bialy looking for it right now. He knows he needs to make a frag here. He needs to make something happen. It looks like he may be going down as well. Gets taken to 24 HP, and he has to retreat with his tail between his legs as well. As Mouse Sports are going to be making their way up towards Catwalk now. Just desperate to land a frag here from VP's perspective. They go for the flashbang, but Bialy can't get it done. Nico's Deagle again rips on out. It's on Neo. One tap, two taps there from him. He's looking for more. It's not going to happen. And therefore, this goes into two on three, and Snacks is still somehow alive. The first player to eat damage in the round after a few seconds now has to try and retake this site. They don't have a defuse kit, only a decoy for utility. And now Taz has been spotted and tanked as well. It's not looking good, is it, for VP? It's definitely not looking good. They haven't got a kit as well. I think they did buy one, so they're going to have to try and salvage that. They have a chance. They'll be forcing up towards CT spawn here, getting their way towards car, but it's almost impossible at this point. It's just going to be one player remaining. That's Taz. He gets taken down, and the huge pistol round does go in favor of Mouse Sports there. I'm more than certain that VP will be forced buying up into this one. Neo did real have a chance here. He gets the double headshot. It just wasn't enough. The round was already over that stage. You can see Snacks' HP, and here it comes. There's actually not too much of a full force by here. You can see them keeping some money on their players. Neo has gone for the scout, and Bialy and Taz with Desert Eagles, but they haven't purchased armor at all. Full rifle setup coming in from Mouse Sports there. They're kind of predicting a force buy coming in from the CTs, but I'd assume they're going to play this very methodically indeed. They want to just sit back for as long as possible. Take advantage of that new round time. We have an extra 10 seconds now in the, in the round, so definitely work yourself, well, give yourself some favor there when you in these Antico situations. Absolutely. When you see right off the bat that the bomb carrier is still at T-spawn, you know it's going to be a slow round. You know they're just hoping to get a couple of uh, opening picks. And typically, that's how Mouse Sports have been approaching both of their halves, and it's, it's been working for them. Snacks goes peering through mid. Easy frag in the end for Dennis. Chris J was the player that tanked him beforehand. Just trying to wait for the CTs to make mistakes. Snacks exactly. making the first one there. Brings in the man advantage. Now they can just kind of group up, work together, and just do something very simple indeed. You can see the majority of the players towards those B tunnels. If they execute it towards that part of the map right now, that'd be absolutely perfect. You can just see it's Taz there alone, I think. There. It's just going to be him. As they're not going to have to show any presence anywhere else. They can just actually just walk into this bomb site right now and take an absolute miracle for Taz to do anything out of this. 
And he's going to have to channel his inner Neo, that's for sure, and land two tasty headshots. And, well, he gets absolutely nothing for his troubles. And in doing so, that pretty much just puts the red light in the face of VP. They probably just back away here, I guess, and, and see if they can save a couple of these pistols. Uh, yeah, I think you're probably right at that point. When when the bomb goes down towards B, you, you've bought up some pistols, you've got the scouts, etc. You're not going to get anything of this. You can either hold patiently for some exits. I would say keep the upgraded pistols and the scouts on next round. You see Bialy trying to sniff out lower B, see if you can find anything here. Pasha is towards spawn side of B-Tunnels. He does get something out of this, but I don't think he'll be saving that weapon. They know he's got it, and they want to be punishing for it. The good news for him, though, they've got Neo towards T-Spawn. It's actually quite a magical setup they've got going on. As Neo does tag another player there, and he will be just trying to survive. I was about to say, but he maybe wants a little bit more out of this. Yeah, Neo with the uh, the Overwatch with the Scout. Pretty nice work from him. It definitely keeps the terrorists at bay as well. Maybe he can upgrade to again Mill here as well. You can see him. I'm going to see if he can actually grab one. Won't have time to do that, but there it is. Well, sports do take the round, but at least VP doing something with it, getting a couple of frags and saving the scouts. It's something to work with at least. But uh, we we are looking down the barrel, Matt. It's uh, we are. another upset here coming in. Absolutely. As they say, like it was decent work, but they're running out of time. They're running out of lifelines now, VP. It's it's going to get to the point next round when they buy up. That could be do or die. Absolutely. If they right. lose that round, they are up the creek without a paddle. And there's Nico oh, just going straight in. Oh, oh, oh. This is a stack on B, but Nico, ridiculous franks from him. Pash is going to land there. Grenade onto Nico, but next just walks in, bags himself two frags. And just like that, it's a four and one. And Neo has to try and retake the site with a scout. Yeah, Nico is doing absolute work there, securing the round for his team. Walks into the bomb site and just wrecks two players towards the back there. Two simple taps. And that pretty much summed up the round there. Very impressive stuff from him. He couldn't even see that player. Bialy, sit down, my friend. Snacks gets punished as well. And we enter round number 19 here. 13 plays five in favor of Mouse Sports. Not a scoreline I think I'd be saying this game, but there it was. And Snacks does have the AWP now. Didn't invest too heavily into that force buy, so it's going to be down to him. The problem for the CTs here, they don't have any kits to work with whatsoever, so they need to be finding that first frag. Chris J has other ideas, though, as he slowly edges his way into the B side, trying to find anything he can. A surprise play in the end. Oh, Taz. Oh, Taz. You'd have fancied him to get at least one kill from that position. He had the drop. And then Snacks gets picked up afterwards. VP just haven't shown up in this game so far. Make that another frag. This time it's Pasha who eats another grenade. That combo. Molotov and a grenade on your head. So when the CTs, when you know they force ball in the second round, you know the utility's not great. They won't have the incendiaries to hold off a simple play, like B play like that. You can justify just walking the sides of surprising players at that point. Taz there by himself in the three-on-one. Like you said, probably could have got at least one out of that, but gets taken down by Dennis, and that was when the deficit began. They only had one player committed to that side of the map. The retake tried to come in, but this great usage of the incendiaries and grenades combo as well was fantastic for Mouse Sports. Just give me Neo remaining. He does get taken down, and Mouse Sports go 14 to 5. They're in Germany in front of a home crowd, and it looks like they're actually performing as well. Very impressive stuff from them so far. And Snacks is 3 for 18. I, I cannot remember. He was a the time. player at Sivo finals. He absolutely destroyed Mouse Sports. Yeah. He was like getting like 30 frags every single map, it felt like. And now he hasn't turned up whatsoever. Three frags after 20 rounds. That's he's, kind of nuts. He was ranked fifth. There's a revolver out. And he's got a revolver as well, yeah. I, I don't even know what's going on at this point. Molotov's going to do <laughs> quite a, a bit of revolver. damage. <laughs> okay. It's finally happened. I was actually thinking today, have we seen a revolver come out in a pro game at all in uh, the last few months since it was actually so. did, added in? And you can see Snacks going against the meta. He wants to show it's a viable weapon. Let's see what you can do, Snacks. He's got to come down to you with his revolver. Maybe it's the, the secret weapon here. Well, we said before that round 19 was pretty much do or die as far as VP uh, yeah. were concerned. Uh, it seems like die is the only option now as this round is going to very quickly slip away. Come on, Snacks. This is it. Right. 1v5 revolver clutch. Let's go. <laughs> what is this weapon? Oh, it's <laughs> so bad. <laughs> so not, I've never seen anyone take that over a Desert Eagle. That's kind of crazy, but maybe we'll see it come into it more in 2016. People will learn how to use it effectively, but uh, that definitely did not work out for him. So Mouse Sports now map points and 10 rounds to play with to find the one. You can see once again VP. I've got the double orb set up once more, so maybe they can do something with this. They're going to require an absolute astonishing performance to get themselves back into this game, but never say never with these guys. Well, I said Mouse Sports had a chance to win this game. I did not expect it to be this one-sided at all. I thought VP would at least take them to the limits, but it has been a landslide victory so far. And as VP has an ace up their sleeve, 
which needs to be pulled out right now. Oh, Chris J. Wow. Oh my goodness. Outreacting in the old completely shreks him. Yeah. And for VP, it pretty much is all over now. This has been be the story of this entire match. It seems like Mousebots are very good at getting these initial frags. The Ali does answer back. He takes down Nico onto the bomb side, brings it down to the four on four. What can they do? You can see Bialy is very low indeed. If Snacks has actually got himself in a decent position, but the problem is Bialy will be waiting for him behind these long doors. This shouldn't be a frag that Snacks can get. And there it is. It's actually Speedy that takes him down there. And a huge retake coming in for the Polish side out. Mouse have been on point so far in this first map of the tournament for them. Pasha, though, is going to try and do something for his team. He's not going to get anything done. And there we go. Mouse Sports take it. Not only the map, Henry, but in convincing fashion. 16 5. Impeccable stuff there from Mouse Sports. So we saw FaZe take down Luminosity. And now we have Mouse Sports taking down Virtus Pro. We haven't seen Virtus Pro in a while, but I still favored them going into this one. Like you said, at least give them a decent game. 16 5. That's a crazy scoreline going forward. You can see what it means to the guys here. Mouse Sports going through a little turbulent time in 2015, yep. changing rosters quite a lot. Now they've brought Speedy back, removed Gobby. Nico calling, and you can't really argue with the results so far. It may only be a best of one and dust two. I feel like that's a map for this pro. That was their downfall, to be honest. It, it's a map we commonly say they don't really play. A lot of people have been saying it's one they've been kind of working on and they're trying to make it a thing, but. If, you, if you're playing like that, their T sub is very poor, in my opinion. They were losing the first frag over and over again. They didn't seem to have the executions or the economy management to actually get into those rounds. It was difficult to watch at points. Oh, it definitely was. And for me, the the key thing is Snacks. I think he finished on three frags. In That's, entire map. He's considered what, what the fourth best player of yeah. 2015. He's normally their talisman in terms of fragging. That's not every day you can say after a complete series he finishes on three frags obviously it's an anomaly i don't think that'll be the, the trend going forward they're not at the tournament yet but uh let's hope they can pick things up absolutely so we're going to send it back to the uh, analysts over on the desk take it away guys i mean we sit here and talk but i don't know if we're analyzing because you guys are over two that's not true oh tell well, me, well, tell well, me i mean we're over two in predictions but we're we're quite right of we know we talk about how are mouse birds going to win if they're going to win this even though it's unlikely i told you it's possible but you know not plausible but it still happened so that's here. not a correct prediction no the prediction is right, no the result is wrong but you know the analysis the, 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 the analysis is the there the aggression was a lot of the part of that and vp never really getting set up we also talked about which vp would show up i don't think anyone showed up no. and you, you brought the, this to the point as well like how important is chris going to be for, for Mouse Sports, is he going to be able to find openings? Is he going to make Nico's job of in game leading a lot easier? And he did, his, like, in a massive way. His scout, I think he's still the best scout player in the world. Like, yeah. two headshots yeah. in two separate rounds from the car position. Definitely. Yeah. Like, he's, he's, he's been crazy with the gun all the time. Although I would put the MBK there, up there as well, with the scout. But yeah, and all of those, you know, most of those frags were really high impact. They were, you know, fra frags which led to his team winning the round because of them. So great performance from, from all of the players. Yeah. Everyone showed up and, you know, Chris J had those kills. Nico had a couple of good rounds. Dennis, Dennis well. was great on the rotations and, you know, cleaning up the, the rounds. I mean, basically what, what needed to happen for Mouse Sports happened. They won both pistols. They got to a good start. I was uh, pleasantly surprised by, by, by the early aggression on the city side, even though they lost the, the first two gun rounds. They tried to push B, they tried to push Catwalk. They didn't want to let, you know, VP bring their game Set to up, them. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I was I was really, really positively surprised by that. Yeah, no, me too. And I, and I think the small mistakes that Mouse Sports did with the aggressive pushes on their buy rounds, the, fir the first couple of buy rounds, was, it's not massive. It's something you can easily fix as well. Because you saw that parts of the aggressive moves they set down, no, put up, they were, they were good. You just don't need to be as aggressive on every part of the map at the same time. You can just go with one or two of them. And that's going to give you something to work with uh, going further anyway. Uh, I think it's safe to say that VP did not work on Dust2 during the break. <laughs> I think it's safe to say they might not have worked on much. Yeah, no, I think they'd kind of been in holiday modus. We'll talk about that. We're going to come back to that because you guys yeah. mentioned that Dust2 probably shouldn't have gone through that pool. You expected yeah, well, We thought they were the baiting man. us to like, oh, they're leaving it in for last. Exactly. You know, so daring. They yeah. baited themselves all Yeah. Right. yeah. Wrecked. Well, the man who did not bait himself and one we already touched on having a great game is Chris J. He's standing up by with Paula. Chris J, congratulations first off. 16-5, relatively comfortable. I did ask you beforehand, did it feel easy? And you said it, it wasn't exactly the case. Uh, like, 
the score says it uh, was an easy game, like 65. They only got five rounds, sure. Um, but we had to play our best game. I think we we played close to our best game, and that made it look easy. But uh, big props to my teammates, and uh, yeah, we hope to continue like this. Was there anything in particular that you guys did or thought of coming into the map that you know brought you guys the victory? Well, on those two, we had some struggles on City side lately. Some of our players don't feel so confident on their spots. Uh, so we did change some positions. We played a bit different style than usual, uh, which maybe caught VP a bit out, out, off guard. So, yeah, might have been the key. Were you happy with the fact that it ended up being a dust two game? Because, you know, VP can sometimes be a bit inconsistent on that map. And uh, you guys, you know, you, you have a very strong aiming kind of uh, t team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were happy with this too. I mean, especially I am happy with this too always. I really like to play the map. And uh, I also know VP were never that good on this too. Lately, they've been playing it a lot more and I have become better. But still, we feel that we have an, an edge against them. And I think it showed. Now, you're going to play the winner of Dignitas Astralis. I just looked over the guy's shoulders, and I think Astralis are quite a way out ahead on, on, on the T side, but you never know uh, what, what could happen. Who would you prefer to play out of the two? Mm, I would rather play Astralis because they're their better team, and I want to beat the better team. I mean, if it did come down to that, you know, it, it, what, what would be the thought process going in playing Astralis, who are at the moment, you know, in pretty good form? Uh, like we would just play to win. I mean, Astralis, we, I think we've never beaten the, like the old TSM lineup or whatever that team name was back then. We never beat them on land before, at least not, uh, at least I did not, and I'm pretty sure none of my teammates did. So it's maybe a, a bit of a hurdle for us to, to overcome them, but we're excited for that match if it's going to happen. Being part of uh, a German organization, playing in Leipzig, is it nice to have the crowd behind you and supporting you? Yeah, sure, it's awesome. I mean, we love the support from the fans and we thrive on it, so. Yeah, I mean, lo looking by that performance, it did uh, play a part because you had the cheers and stuff every time you guys were doing well. Going forwards from here, how far do you think you guys can go in this competition? I mean, not as we beat VP, we want to get to the semifinals. I mean, we wanted that before. That's our main goal, to get through the groups, and after that, we're just going to do our best. Hopefully, the crowd will push us to the end. And just quickly, before we head over to the desk, how integral to your form at the moment was it changing uh, the player out, you know, losing God B? Mm, I don't know. I mean, players just played good. Everybody stepped up. Maybe Fatih could also have stepped up here, but uh, right now he's not here, and we're doing good without him. All right. Well, congratulations, Chris. Best of luck in whoever you play next. And I'm sure I will see you later in the competition. Yeah. In until then, we will head back over to Matt and the guys on the desk. Yeah, thank you so much, Paula. And yeah, great game from Chris J as well. Mouse Sports, they now move into the upper bracket. Astralis apparently leading that second game, so potential opponent. Um, where do we start with this, guys? I mean, there's a lot to talk about in terms of what went wrong for VP. Yeah, and uh, one thing that Chris mentioned is the fact that it might have looked extremely comfortable, but they felt that they had to play up to their best. I want to say that there were def definitely opportunities for VP to get a lot more rounds on their T side, and that's partly because Mouse Sports' defense at times, especially towards that A-bomb site, was at best shaky. Um, I think we have a clip that's going to come up later that you're going to talk about, but they had a really weird way of how they solved giving up long control without even grabbing cat control, which is pretty much a cardinal sin when you're playing that bomb site. There were a couple of rounds where rounds got not just one, maybe even two entry kills, and then they would still give up control of a site, and it would come to an after plan situation, and then it would end up in a 2v1 or something. It would be really close. There was a, you know, there were, as you said, there were a number of possibilities for VP to to win rounds where they weren't supposed to have, you know, any place in them. And we talked about mouse sports have needing a good start. They got a decent start by winning a pistol, but they lost the three following rounds. So it was 3-3 three, three at that point, you know, it's a, it's the T's favor basically, but luckily for mouse, they managed to get a lot of kills in those uh, eco rounds as well. So the pressure on VP's economy was there. And then they just, you know, their players were on point. They would get like Nico, Chris J, uh, next, they would manage to get those early entry kills, which then, you know, gives you a lot more room to later on in the round to defend. Yeah, and, and one thing you mentioned as well uh, off camera, the fact that y you spoke to Nico, uh, obviously before the game, and we were talking about how VP have previously played that CT side on the understood they like to go aggressively, and we saw that in the pistol round as well. They went aggressively instantly with two players, uh, and that's something that 
Nico had told you that we we're expecting this. Yeah. That so he's he's gonna, he's gonna buy a deagle, and everyone's just gonna sit like a static turret and wait for people to run into them. And that's exactly you what happened. You could see that they had two players outside long A and two players yeah. in B tunnels, and they were just waiting for someone to push and get info and wanted to punish. And that's what they did. I think he had shot at someone through the door. So I think he left snacks on three HP, three HP yeah. and they already killed one guy. So from that point on, it's basically a five v three. And even though. Neo had a good spot, got two crazy headshots. In the end, it was just not enough. The, the, the site was overwhelmed. And what Chris J also mentioned in that interview, which is really important in, in top level Counter Strike, is uh, mentality and confidence. Seeing that VP actually allowed Dust 2 to go through yeah. gave a boost of confidence to the mouse players as well because of two things. They know They're that VP it. is not as good on that map. Maybe if, you know, even if VP improved, they still believe that they're not as good. And they enjoy playing that map as well, which gave them you know, a, a big boost of confidence going into the map. Let's look into some of the specifics. Vendetta, you'd highlighted a specific round, a B split with the Tech Nines. Yeah, so this is where, uh, this is an eco Tech Nine buy from, uh, from uh, DP. And here you're gonna see Nico getting caught out in mid. And this is where we, uh, where me and Yanko talked to ourselves and like, this is where everything falls down from us first because their defense up till this point had been so shaky over on that A bomb site, and they just get completely dismantled by a pretty common push. This is something that, uh, well, a lot of teams have in their playbook, really. And you can see, well, and, and they had three players towards the B side. So it's yeah. Nico who was usually playing A and the two guys in B. And it was a quasi buy from, from uh, VP. They, they, they just bought a like couple of pistols and a smoke and a flash. And as you said, like Nico got caught off guard. They overwhelmed the site. They couldn't decide on which, you know, part of the site they want to focus on. Yeah, and that's oftentimes a problem. When you get B split, you need to give up one of the entry points most of the time. Either you have to have both of your players, because yeah. normally you play two people towards B, you have have to have both of them focus on either the mid area to stop the split or just focus pushing aggressively in towards upper dark and just taking control over that area so it allows for your retake to be a lot more effective because you basically have two people needing to watch three three entrances yeah and that, that's just the impossible the tunnel. yeah and uh, the thing is luckily for mouse they won the following round when they yeah, were on so a kind of an eco so well we've got another clip as well that you highlighted ynk mouse pushing up long yeah so this is an example of how you know, Mouse initially wanted to go for the long control, and you can see <coughs> this player gets forced forced back. Speed is now. Yeah, yeah, VP gets the control of it, but Mouse doesn't have, like, cat control either, so now they try to, you know, adjust. They send Chris J out to push towards the uh, cat. They also smoke off, but you see that VP went for a fast split. They're, alre al they're already there. Chris J gets the kill, immediately to get traded off, and look at the position of Mouse players now. This moment they don't have long they don't have side they don't have short they have three players stuck uh, at the city area you know which is a, a terrible spot to be in so i'm not sure if they at the beginning of this round actually wanted to boost the player on the on the boxes towards city spawn to defend from a from a b split because we only saw that one guy towards long and everyone else was on that slope from uh, city, city spawn yeah. city spawn to a ramp but the thing is the, uh, my point here is you have to realize that you don't have cat control, that you don't have time to get cat control if you give up long. So you realize in what in what position you are. Just stand there and fight for it. Do the best you can. That player on long, try to buy some time, get a kill for for the other players to rotate there as well. Because you can't if you get pinched from both positions and there's no way for you to win yeah, that round. And, and this was a recurring theme with the A defense, and this is why we were kind of worried from Mouse Sports's part. Uh, a long time going in uh, through that first half because they did this mistake constantly. But uh, luckily for them, VP didn't punish them. And the difference enough. is, in this particular case, VP had still all of the all of the five players alive. In other situations, they already were, uh, you know, a man or two down. So it's yeah. easier let's for mouse players to retake. Le let's move it forward a little bit there because we've got about 15 minutes to our next game. We'll look at the bracket, the updated bracket, as it now lies in Group B. It's Virtus Pro that have dropped down into what's being called the losers match. It's a harsh way of putting it, but hey, let's face it, they didn't turn up at all. Mouse Sports will play the winner of Astralis versus Dignitas, and it looks like that will be the new organization, the uh, XTSM X question mark Astralis lineup. We'll talk about that a little bit later on because that will be our second best of one coming up but right now in about 15 minutes time guys we do move into navi versus phase obviously we'll have a lot more time to talk about it when we arrive but just initial thoughts on that game well if phase can play like they did on inferno it should be a pretty interesting game navi's still big favorites in my eyes and i expect navi to come out of, out of tops uh, in this group for me it's the same scenario as the phase luminosity game because also more even more so because uh, navi and luminosity have a similar play style so same story for phase need to keep up their 
current level of performance need a good start, most definitely. But for me, I agree, Navi are still the favorites to win that one. G2 now phase is a pretty scary momentum team. We saw it, and the reason I mentioned it as G2 is because we saw it from that from that exact lineup at Cluj yeah. when they had Dennis. So interesting thought and best of ones that if they get rolling early, we could see a Navi luminosity, or luminosity deciding match. Whereas I thought that would be the uh, best of one to decide who takes first seed in the group. So interesting thought for FaZe. Hope not. <laughs> well, <laughs> we'll see. Yeah. We'll see if they can come up with it. Um, d map pool, just quickly again, we're going to get more into this in a second, but is, is that something that has to be considered? You know, to G2, or uh, I get, I'm going to keep saying this, but to, to FaZe try and get back onto something like Inferno that's momentum based, or is Navi going to be aware of that now? Yeah, but I think that Navi is probably going to ban it out because it's most of the time it's their second ban after Cash. And I think that. The phase is going to be forced to ban all of the customs because Navi plays them all, uh, all uh, and they're pr really pretty well. It, yeah. So it, we're going to end up in probably something like Mirage. I think that's like there's a biggest chance of playing Mirage. All right, guys. Well, we'll find out in just a minute. We're going to take a short break, and then of course when we come back, it is exactly that game. Phase versus Navi, both with one under their belt already. And Navi it was a little bit more convincing, but mind you, Phase they showed up in spades against the team Luminosity that we thought surely would take game one. So the New Jersey's maybe some luck in them. We'll be back in just a minute.